Hey everybody and happy Easter. We're so excited that you're here with us this morning, that you chose to worship with us on Easter Sunday. Uh, if you could just leave a comment uh, below in the comment section just to say hi. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that. If you're on our website, there's a form at the bottom of the page that you can fill out and let us know that you were here this morning. That would be awesome. And now let's listen to Pastor David's message. Good morning. Happy Easter. We're so excited that you're here. And whenever and wherever you may be joining us, we're so thankful that you've checked out New Life Baptist Church. My name is Pastor David, and this is actually the first official service uh, of New Life Baptist Church. And we're excited about what God is going to do. And however you found us, we're glad that you're here. We're looking forward to a time uh, in God's Word together, and we're looking forward to seeing what happens as God speaks to our hearts. You know, with COVID-19 going on, uh, it just it seems like right now, more than ever, uh, we're just more isolated. We're more alone. And for all of us extroverts that are out there, uh, you know, this is, this is driving us crazy. I don't know how I'm going to survive. Uh, I'm on, I'm on uh, people withdrawals right now. And then for all of you introverts out there, uh, you're celebrating at home alone on your couch uh, and just enjoying being by yourself. So however you're, however you're here, uh, something that's very clear and true to us all is that in a world of social distancing and a world that where we're all observing the stay at home, work safe orders, uh, we're just we're more alone than than at least I'm used to being. And something that we're going to see and what we're starting over the next several weeks here at New Life is we're starting in a series that we're calling personal. Because with Jesus, we're never alone. And that's something that I'm so thankful for. It's something uh, that, that, just, that we have the opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus, that we can walk with Him and we're not alone uh, with Him. So today we're going to start and we're going to dive into God's Word in, Ma in Mark chapter number 5. And uh, I'm going to read you a verse in verse number 19, Mark 5, 19. If you have a Bible, go ahead and pull it up. Otherwise, it's going to be at the bottom of the screen. Mark 5, 19, it says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. Today we're going to talk about a personal relationship. With Jesus, there is freedom. Let's go ahead and pray and just ask God to bless this time together, and then we're going to dive into God's Word. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today and for the opportunity that we have uh, to, to, to spend time studying your Word, to hear from you. And Lord, I don't know who's watching this right now, but Lord, I ask that you bless them in a special way. I ask that you'd speak to their heart. I pray that you give them exactly what they need. And uh, they may be watching right now on Easter Sunday morning, or it may be uh, down the road from now. But Lord, I ask that you bring this into their life exactly when they need it. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with me as I, as I preach and share your word. I ask that you'd fill me with your spirit and just do amazing things in our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the best moments of my life, one of my favorite days of all time, uh, and probably yours as well, or you're looking forward to it, maybe unless you're a senior this year. Uh, but one of my favorite days of my life was graduation day. Uh, you remember gr your graduation whenever, uh, uh, man, just all the work was done, the projects were over, uh, and just and the joy of knowing that no more tests, no more teachers, it's just it's done. I remember whenever I graduated from high school and college and just walking across that stage, getting the diploma, and once the ceremony was over, just, just celebrating. You know that feeling whenever uh, the weight is off your chest uh, and you just have that feeling of freedom. I, that was just a wonderful, a wonderful moment. And you know, in all of our lives, we need, we need that freedom in our lives. And right now, sometimes for some of you, it may not feel like that. So you may have that moment where you're just like, man, I just need the stress to be lifted off of my chest. I just need, uh, I need some freedom from all this mess. And what we're going to find today is that with Jesus, there is freedom. So in Mark chapter 5, we see three ways that Jesus offers freedom to you and to me today. In verse number 1, we see that Jesus offers freedom from our storms. He offers freedom from our storms. In verse number 1, the Bible says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. So here this verse tells us that Jesus uh, takes a trip across a, with, on a boat with his disciples, and they go into this country of the Gadarenes. And, and basically it just tells us that Jesus took a trip, and to you and to me, whenever we read that, it may not seem like much. Uh, but in, in 2009, whenever the passengers of U.S. Airway 1549, uh, whenever they flew and they took off in their plane, and then they landed in the Hudson River whenever, whenever Captain Sullenberger uh, landed them in the Hudson River safely. That wasn't just an everyday trip. 
Uh, for those people, it was an event that they, they took off in the plane and then landed safely whenever uh, those birds landed and flew through the engines, wiped out the engines, and they had to land, they had to crash land in the Hudson River. That was an eventful day. And here in Mark chapter number five, it tells us that Jesus and the disciples, they, cross, they go across the sea. And it's an eventful journey because in Mark chapter four, what we find is that Jesus is going with his disciples on this trip and they run into a storm. They go into this storm and really it's an amazing thing in Mark four. It tells us that uh, the, wind is, the wind is howling and it's tossing their boat back and forth and uh, the rain is going down. And I, I would imagine that it was just beating down so hard that you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And the Bible tells us that the boat was filling up with water. Could you just imagine that being in that boat uh, and, and, the, and the rain and the waves uh, just filling your boat up with water? They're, they're trying to scoop out the water and they're getting to work and they're fearing for their lives. And then all of a sudden, one of the disciples must have noticed, hey, where is Jesus? Where did he go? And they're looking for him and they can't find him. You know, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been in that position before? I know I have where uh, I'm in a storm of life. Uh, I'm going through a difficulty. I'm going through a hard time. And I wonder, where is Jesus? God, God, where are you? And here, that's where these disciples are. They're in the middle of this storm and uh, they don't know what's going to happen to them. And yet we find uh, that they are looking all over for Jesus and they can't find him. Uh, here we are in the middle of this storm. There's, uh, I think as Houstonians, we know about storms, don't we? Uh, I think about September last year, whenever uh, there was those storms and floodings and maybe it, maybe it affected your family. Uh, I think a couple of years ago with Hurricane Harvey and and just and that storm and how how crazy that all that all was. Maybe you're like my parents who who they uh, their home was completely flooded and they had to they had to redo everything in their home. And uh, I remember during that storm, me and my wife we were we were we were driving for a moment. We were fearing for our lives. Uh, we know something about storms, and uh, maybe you're in a storm right now. Maybe you're worried about your health, or maybe you're worried uh, about your finances and your job. Maybe you're worried you're in a storm like that. Uh, maybe you're worried. Maybe you have a storm in, in your house. Uh, some of you are homeschooling for the first time, and that's quite the storm. And you know, all of us, we go, we go through storms, and we do go through hard times, and sometimes it's easy for us to wonder, God, where are you? And those disciples, they, they found Jesus, and they found Jesus sleeping in the stern in the rear of the boat. And Jesus, he steps out, he lifts up his voice, and he says, peace be still, and he, he calms the storm for them. And here in Mark 5, 1, Jesus gets them through the storm. And you know, that's something comforting for me while we're in the middle of a difficult season ourselves, uh, that Jesus doesn't just take us to storms, he takes us through storms. And here these disciples, they, yes, in Mark 4, they're going to a storm, but in Mark 5, 1, we see that they get through it. And if, you're, if you've been a follower of Jesus, something that you know is that for every storm you've gone through in the past, God has been with you through it. And I promise you that, that here we are in this tough time, but God will be with us through this storm like he always is and like he always does. And we see here in Mark 5, 1, that, that Jesus gave them freedom from the storm. In verse number one, they get, they get through that storm and they land in the country of the Gadarenes. But next here in verse number two, we see that they land the boat, they land in the country of the Gadarenes, they get off the boat. And then whenever they get off the boat, Jesus looks up and let's go ahead and read it in verse number two. It says, and when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. So Jesus gets out of the ship and up, up on the hillside, there is a man who uh, he's, he's out of his mind. He's lost his mind. In fact, the Bible tells us that he's demon possessed and he's, he's running towards Jesus. And it gives us some of his background. It says that uh, he couldn't be bound with chains. People saw him and uh, people, uh, people observed how this demon possessed man was just causing terror in their society. And, and they tried to imprison him. They tried to bind him with chains, but, but nothing would work for them. And verse number four says, because he had, he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. And the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So they tried everything that they could do and nothing would work. In verse number five, and always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. So here we see that there's this, there's this wild man that comes running to Jesus. And here's the second lesson that we learned. 
We learn not only does Jesus give us freedom from our storms, but he also gives us freedom from our chains. He gives us freedom from our chains. Here's this man. He is in trouble. Uh, he's bound. He's bound. They're trying to bind him with chains. That's not working because there's something stronger than that that's binding him. His, his own sin, his own, uh, the life that he's lived, he is bound in his sin. So this is a physical bondage and it's a spiritual bondage. Here he is and this man, he's, uh, he's devastated. It's saying that he's crying, he's weeping, he's cutting himself with stones. This man doesn't know what to do. This man is in serious trouble. But then whenever he comes to Jesus, Jesus frees him from his chains. And can I tell you something? Uh, we may not be bound just like this man was bound, but all of us are born bound in sin. The Bible says that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. You and I, we are both, we are born sinners. Both of us, uh, we have been uh, shackled in chains, shackled in sin. And, we, and we've lived our lives, and, and, and oftentimes I know I've been there where I just, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know, I didn't know where I was going to turn, but I knew that, that my sin was just, it was holding me back. Yet here we see that whenever this man meets Jesus, Jesus frees him from that. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life. And God gave this man freedom on that day. And my friend, I would like to tell you today that Jesus wants to give you freedom. That's why we're celebrating today, Easter Sunday. We're celebrating the fact that even though you and I are sinners, Jesus, the son of God was born and lived a perfect life. He died on the cross and uh, he was, he, he suffered. He was, he was mocked. He was beaten. And then he was hung on a cross where he died. And for three days, he was in a tomb where after three days, he rose again. And that's what we celebrate. Jesus gained the victory for you and for me so that you and I could have forgiveness from sin. My friend, could I ask you today, do you know, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Do you know Christ is your savior? Has Jesus forgiven your sins? Just like this man, we're bound in sin. We're, the Bible says that we are slaves to sin without Christ. But because of what Jesus did, if we'll put our faith and trust in him, in him, he'll give us freedom from our sins. If you've never trusted Christ as your savior, I'd like to invite you to do that right now here in this moment. If you'd say, uh, David, I've never trusted Jesus as my savior, but I know that I need him to forgive my sins. Then from your heart, if you, if you mean this, pray this with me. Je Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, to pay for my sins that you were buried and that you rose again so that I could be forgiven. And Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sin and uh, to give me new life in Jesus. I want to make you my savior and my God. My friend, if you don't know Jesus as your savior and you'll, you'll pray that from your heart, believing in Jesus's death, burial and resurrection to forgive your sins. The Bible says that he'll do it. As many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. My friend, if you just trusted Jesus as your savior, you are forgiven and that's wonderful. And we're cheering for you. Uh, if you just did that, in fact, comment in the section, in the, in the comment section right now and let us know that you trusted Jesus as your savior so we can celebrate with you. So here we see that this man, he get, first we see that Jesus gives freedom in our, from our storms. Not, he get, sometimes he takes us through storms, but he always gets us through them. Then we see that Jesus gives us freedom from our chains. And then finally, we see here in the rest of this passage that Jesus gives freedom and gives us new life. With freedom, Jesus gives us new life. In verse number 10, or verse number 11, it says, Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. So he gave them permission to, to leave them in, to go into the pigs. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And that herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So here we get the rest of the story. Uh, this demon-possessed man comes to Jesus. Jesus uh, tells the demons to leave. And whenever, uh, whenever they're, they're fighting with him a little bit, Jesus says, what's your name? And they say, we're legion. Which legion was a Roman, tro Roman troops, was about three to 6,000 soldiers. Uh, so this was, this was a big problem, yet they, had, they were no match for Jesus. So Jesus casts them out and he sends them out into a herd of pigs. 
Now I read that and I'm like, man, that's kind of weird, <laughs> isn't it? It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird ending to the story. Jesus sends them out. They go into pigs. The pigs run off the mountain and they, uh, they take a dive into the Sea of Galilee. So no bacon for anybody that day. What a bummer. And you know, I, I wonder what, what's the big deal with that? But here we, there's a couple of things that I would like for you to know about why this is important. First of all, the reason why this is important is Jesus giving freedom to this man. That was Jesus's priority. Jesus valued this man who was in need of help. Can I tell you something? Jesus values you. Jesus cares for you. You are the most important thing in the world to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves you and cares for you. The second thing that's important to know about this is that they're in the country of the Gadarenes, which may not mean a whole lot to you, but basically here's what that's telling us. It's telling us that these people were from the tribe of Gad. So they were Jewish people that lived really away from everybody else. Uh, they weren't with the rest of their country. So, uh, you know, they were the same country, but they were quite different. For example, here we are in Texas, you know, California, that place is different. Uh, the Northeast, that place is different. So, uh, you know, that, that's, it's different than we are. In this country, the gatherings, they were different than really the rest of the Jews. They were different from the rest of Israel. And, and something in, in Jewish law, in Old Testament law, uh, the pig business, that was illegal. That was against God's law. So here's what Jesus is doing. Jesus is getting rid of any obstacles that get, would get in the way of this man's relationship with Jesus. He's getting rid of any obstacle that would get in the way of his new life in Christ. That's what he's doing. And that's what he wants to do for you. So he gets rid of these pigs. He gives this man a new life. And here's how the story ends. People see it, people hear about it, and they see that this once crazy man now he's in his right mind. Now he's, now he's sane again. Now he's sitting uh, with clothes on, thank goodness. And here as we close, what we find is that not everybody wants it. Not everybody wants Jesus. So they beg him, they beg him to leave. They get him to go. And here we, we see a contrast. There are people that want Jesus to leave. They don't want him in their, in their town. They don't want him in their city. They don't want him around. Then there's this one man, and he says in verse number 18, it says, when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. So you have some people that don't want him. You have this man who experienced Jesus, who desperately wants to be with Jesus. My friend, you have a choice as well. Jesus wants to give you freedom from your storms, your chains, and he wants to give you new life. But the choice is completely yours. Not everyone that encounters Jesus wants him, but you have a choice if you want to receive him in the life that he offers or not. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, but the choice is completely and totally up to you. In the early 1800s, President Andrew Jackson was faced with a choice. There was a man by the name of George Wilson, and George Wilson had committed crimes against the U.S. mail. He robbed the U.S. mail, and because of his crimes, he was sentenced uh, to death row. He was sentenced to death. So some of George Wilson's friends, they went to President Jackson and they begged him for a pardon uh, for his crimes. And President Jackson decided, yes, I will offer this man a pardon. Problem, the problem came whenever George Wilson was offered the pardon, but he refused it for some reason. Uh, nobody knew what to do with that. Nobody had ever refused a presidential pardon before. And as far as I know, nobody's refused a pardon since. Uh, but George Wilson did, and they didn't know what to do, so they, they, they went to court, and it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Nobody knew what to do with this case. When finally the Supreme Court ruled, the Supreme Court ruled that a pardon is only a pardon if it's received by the person who it's offered to. So they said because George Wilson refused his pardon, he has to be sentenced to death. Just like George Wilson had a choice whether to accept or reject the president's presidential pardon, you and I have a choice whether we're going to accept or reject the freedom that Jesus offers to you and to me. And today I'd like to invite you to accept Jesus, what he's done for you and for me and dying on the cross and rising again to pay for our sins. I'd like to invite you to accept that freedom in Christ today. If you'd like to trust Jesus as your savior and you mean it from your heart, you pray this with me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I put my faith and my trust in you, that you died on the cross to pay for my sins, that you were buried and that you rose again. Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sin, to give me new life and freedom in Christ and give me new life in Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 
If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with your heart, then let us know in the comment section. Send us a message so we can celebrate with you. We are so excited if you've trusted Christ as your Savior right now. And maybe if you haven't, maybe you say, David, I'm, I'm not ready for that. I have questions. Uh, there's, I, I just, I need questions answered. Then please direct message us. Let us know. We would love to talk to you about how you can know Jesus as your personal Savior. I'd like to invite you to join us next week for week two of our series, Personal. I'm so excited about where we're going uh, with this uh, next week. And, and I hope that you'll join us. Thank you for being with us today. May God bless you. Until next time.